until systems can create the space where teachers can build teams where there's a high enough level of trust for them to be vulnerable in sharing their student data and then having a willingness to try something new and different based on what the data is telling them and then have some sort of a mechanism where when they do try something different, it's, it's able to be seen by their colleagues so that they can have some feedback that's positive, constructive for their teacher colleague. So you know, it, it's almost like if, if this teacher team is willing to do that and each of them are able to do a demonstration les lesson and be vulnerable enough to accept feedback, then to me, that's a system like all ships rise because all the teachers on the team, if they're willing, will be able to improve their practice and build their capacity. And that's a beautiful thing, but it's, it's not easy to get to that point. And we're still working on that. And I would say 20 years from now, we will still be working on that. But I think more than anything else, that is the crux. If you can get to that point, um, you're actually going to see things start to move and change in the district. That's a really great answer. And it actually partly answers the next question, which is about the things that you've done in Valverde to create an open and collaborative culture. So, but are there other things? Are there structural arrangements? Are there um, the practices that are modeled? What, what kinds of things build this open and collaborative culture? Yeah, so some of the things that we've done in Valverde kind of create this uh, open and collaborative culture is, um, I'll tell you one fun thing that's evolved over time is um, several superintendents ago, I was a principal in the district and the superintendent never came to the school sites. And so then um, that superintendent retired and we got another superintendent and then a couple of other superintendents. And we finally came to a superintendent where um, they were really passionate about the idea that the superintendent and cabinet should visit all classrooms. Uh, try to do that at least once a year, just to have some face time, even, even for a couple of brief moments. Uh, but it was the idea that you know, the superintendent would be seen by the, the teachers and the students um, and the staff. And um, anyways, fast forward, um, I became a cabinet member with that superintendent. And so we started, you know, going out and, and we wouldn't spend a tremendous amount of time in the classrooms. But um, it was something that I, I thought was valuable because I had seen it both ways. I had, I had worked for a superintendent that never went to schools and then I'd worked for this superintendent who kind of made it, made it a, a goal to get into every classroom. And so when I became superintendent uh, five years ago, um, I continued with this practice. 